four days to go. Four days left. Let's get started. Hey sis, I wanted to make a video about a type of product that I consider to be absolutely vital to my makeup collection, and that is eyeliner. I have a very long and storied history with eyeliner that I don't have time to get into right now, but basically I've been wearing it every day for the past 10 years of my life. <laughs> And only recently, throughout that eyeliner journey, have I discovered what specifically I like and don't like. All right, first up, preferences. It took me a long time to discover that my preferred brush type of eyeliners is a brush tip as opposed to a felt tip. But for some reason, the most widely available ubiquitous type of eyeliner is, I would say, a felt tip. And I just plain don't like them. Reason why? I find that they dry up too quickly. And if they don't dry out too quickly, they're difficult to get a super, super precise line with unless they are very, very, very thin. And even then, sometimes that doesn't work. Case in point. This is the Wet n Wild Skinny Tip Eyeliner. It's specifically marketed as a thin tip eyeliner. And the tip is quite thin. And it is pointy, and you'd think it'd be great for kind of flicking out a cat eye. It's not terrible for that. But is it as good as a brush tip? Not really. What happens is when I'm actually on my eye, the contour of my eye, some product will build up towards the end of the wing if I'm trying to taper it out into something thin. And so it's one of the situations where the wing just keeps getting longer as I try to taper it to the thinnest possible point, but the excess of product in the tip of the felt tip doesn't allow me to do that. Another reason I generally don't like felt tip eyeliners is because oftentimes I find them to be a little bit too pointy. The felt tip, the body of it, is just too rigid. There's not enough give. And I find that this can make even the most pigmented eyeliners hard to be precise with. You need to have a little bit of flexibility in the tip of your eyeliner in order to get a easily maneuverable product, you know? Oh girl, the ver one of the very first liquid eyeliners I used was Revlon's, and I don't remember exactly what it was called because I'm, you know, quantum leaping back to like 2011 here. It was a great eyeliner if you are super keen on causing yourself severe tissue trauma <laughs> while you do your makeup. So if that's what you're into, girlies, hit up eBay, you might be able to find it. I will say this, not every felt tip eyeliner I've used is terrible for precision. One of the other early felt tip eyeliners I used was Maybelline's Line Stiletto, which I still recommend as an amazing beginner liquid eyeliner. You've got a flexible sponge tip that's still quite tapered, so you do get that precision. I wasn't into making ridiculously sharp cat eyes when I owned it, so I cannot speak to how good it is at that but it was wonderful. A benefit that I find in felt tip eyeliners is that sometimes when you've got one with just the right amount of pigmentation in the tip, it's great for filling in the triangle cat eye shape or any other eyeliner shape you are want to make on your eye when you've outlined it with something like a thin brush tip. I do that all the time. It's very tedious to use a super, super needlepoint thin brush tip eyeliner to fill in a cat eye. That's why I like to keep this Wet n Wild one around. That's kind of what it mostly gets used for. I have never quite uh, understood the appeal of gel eyeliners. I don't wanna to talk too much about these, not because I'm worried about like roasting gel eyeliners. I've already done that on my channel, but because I haven't tried very many of them, because I hate them. So I can't, I don't have like the most well-defined background in that sort of thing, you know? I feel like <laughs> Jenna Marbles and that What A Girl's Jewelry Means video. No, I put all my jewelry in the chat. Gel eyeliners to me always seem like a little bit more trouble than they're worth. I feel like the appeal of them is that they're, you know, an eyeliner that's really gonna stick with you throughout your day but like so will a really good waterproof eyeliner. I don't often have super huge issues with eyeliners fading or feathering throughout the day. It's possible that's because I don't really have oily eyelids. I said before, I have the driest skin on the planet. My pores cannot spare the sebum to make my skin oily. I am a brush fire waiting to happen at all times. They always dry out quickly for me or the ones I've tried have. It's hard to get a great line with them unless you are really skilled with an eyeliner brush. They're not great for beginners, I think, at all. Unless you've got one in a pen, I can't believe I'm saying this, like the Benefit Their Real Gel Eyeliner Pen, theoretically, is a good eyeliner for beginners. The idea of it, you know? Execution, in practice, not so much. <laughs> we don't need... Benefit has already been dragged through the mud, uh, 
and the dirt and the grass and the rocks and the mantle and the liquid core and the solid core of the earth about that eyeliner. We don't need to beat that dead horse over again, okay? We'll let that horse rest. I'll talk about waterproof eyeliners. I've tried two eyeliners that were waterproof in the sense that if you wanted to wear that eyeliner and hike up Mount Everest, jump off of it, go scuba diving, uh, swim up through the ocean and get picked up by a helicopter, have that helicopter drop you into a plane, skydive off of that plane, uh, and land in another swimming pool. Then get out of that swimming pool and like go to a dinner date with somebody, they'd be great for that. You put them on, three days go by, and they are still on your face. They're terrifying. I think they might just be street tar that's been condensed into a tube. They are the Kiko Waterproof Eyeliner and the Milani Infinite Eyeliner, which I talked about a thousand years ago in my product surrogate buying video when I tried to sound like this and I tried to be like a super calm and collected beauty vlogger before all this came out, hello. I actually have a real life example of how terrifyingly resilient these eyeliners are. I think it was when I had the Milani Infinite or the Kiko, it was one of them. I was living in Florence and I got up at like six o'clock in the morning, put on a cat eye. We went and hiked up a mountain. Then we hiked back down the mountain, so sweat. While we were hiking back down, it began to torrentially rain, sweat, rain. We then went to the beach and swam in the ocean. I get back, the dead of night, my cat eye is still intact. It survived sweat, rain, and the ocean. And also, I was going through a rather intense depression during that time, so I probably cried at some point throughout that day, and it was still there. Okay, now I'm actually going to get to what this video should be about, which is my favorite type of eyeliner and my favorite eyeliners of that type that I currently own. Brush tip eyeliners, pen or otherwise, are my favorite. Mostly what I enjoy about them is the precision, the fact that I can get the tiniest, thinnest line with a perfect sharp flick at the end of it. That's what I love. I'm not claiming that brush tip eyeliners are going to be the best for everybody, the perfect panacea for all people, but they were for me, so <laughs> I'm just one egg and that's whose perspective I have to speak from. A common example you might be familiar with is the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner and Trooper, which I used to own, the Physician's Formula Eye Booster Eyeliner, which I also used to own, and the NYX Epic Ink Liner, which I've had a bit of a tumultuous relationship with because the one that I got was like way too pigmented. Like there was too much ink in the tube. It would spill out way too much, it would bleed, it was impossible to get like a straight line with. Well, I could get a straight line, but the line would then expand in a, oh, not Fibonacci, oh no. What's the round one? Oh, where's Vi Heart when you need her? But it would, you know, feather into the lines of my eyes and because my eyes are super creepy and dry, like the Sahara Desert, there were a lot of lines to bleed into. But now that it's a little drier, it's fantastic. It's exactly what I want. There are a couple of brush tips that I like that are not in pens. I have the Essence Super Precise Eyeliner and the NYX Matte Liquid Eyeliner, which are functionally the exact same product. Both of them have brushes at the end of wands, which makes them a little more unwieldy because you would just have more brush to work with, which can be kind of intimidating if you're not used to using a product like this. But it's also great because you have ultimate precision. These guys remind me a little bit of the NYC liquid liner from <laughs> years past. Interestingly enough, I don't think you can get NYC in America anymore. I think it's just a, I think you can only get it in Canada now. A Canada-based brand. A brand nida. I don't deserve to be on camera after that. Before I actually put on some eyeliner, I think I would be remiss not to talk about my favorite pencil eyeliner. That one's pretty easy. The LA Girl Gel Glides. These are gorgeous. They slide on like a shadow crayon almost. They stick around pretty well. We got dark brown, boop. This one is jumping, boop. Mermaid vibes is the name of the shade. I'm not just like, <laughs> oh my God, mermaid vibes. <laughs> Let's put on some eyeliner. Firstly, I use my lower lash line as a sort of protractor to figure out the angle of the wing. And then I go and just sort of draw a line across the contour of my eye and connect it at the close to top edge of the wing line that I've made, not going all the way to the top. So I still have a defined point, but going close enough that the shape is closed. I'm using my extremely close to death NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner, which I then swap out for my NYX Matte Liquid Eyeliner to fill in the wing and define the edge of it a little bit more succinctly. This is it from a different angle on my other eye. 
I'm using the NYX Matte Liquid Eyeliner again, and this time I started, it appears, with the contour of my eye, and then I go in and sketch out the wing, and because I'm using my lower lash line, which never changes shape, this almost guarantees that the wings on both sides of my face, or I guess on both of my eyes, will be the exact same angle, which is always what you're going for. Then I just use the eyeliner to very, very carefully fill in the shape of the wing, and then I'm basically finished. <laughs> Okay, hopefully now in future videos and I'm doing eyeliner and I go off screen because I'm trying to get this close to my mirror. This video can be reflected on so y'all know how I tend to do my eyeliner. Eyeliner cinematography is hard. The cinematography is difficult to ma to manage. The Cimarron topographical maps is, is, is difficult, you know? Before you leave, I do need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me, that would be sharp. Thank you for watching, goodbye.